All right, on page 364 today, we are going to talk about the triangle inequality theorem. And the triangle inequality theorem states that the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than must be greater than the third side And what we're talking about here is lengths. The lengths of the two sides must be, the sum of the lengths of the two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. So here's a diagram if we've got this triangle. Triangle QRP. The theorem states that if you take the length of side PQ and you add it to the length of side QR, that sum is going to be greater than the length of PR. And if you take the length of side QR, and you add it to the length of side PR, that sum will be greater than the length of side PQ. And finally, if you take the length of side PR, and you add it to the length of side PQ, that sum will be greater than the length of side QR. The length of any two sides, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. Okay? Here's another rule that also holds true when you're dealing with side lengths of triangles and working some of these practice problems today. In addition to this theorem, we're going to say the length of the length of the third side of a triangle. is between the difference and sum of the two shortest sides. The length of the third side of a triangle 
is between the difference and sum of the two shortest sides. So you're going to be asked two different types of questions today. In example one on page 364, the question says, is it possible to form a triangle? with the given sides. And then they give you three side lengths. And you get an eight, a 15, and a 17. So if we use the second rule I gave you, that the third side of the triangle needs to be between the difference and the sum of the two shortest sides, here's what we do. We take the two shortest sides. We got an 8 and a 15. Those are the two shortest sides. Agreed? We take the longer of those two. We take 15 and we subtract 8. And 15 minus 8 is equal to what? 7. And then we take 8 and 15 and we add them together. So I go 8 plus 15. And that's equal to 23. So what that tells us is that the third side of this triangle needs to be greater than 7 and less than 23. All right? The third side is, here's how we write this. We write this as a compound inequality, referring to the third side. 7 is less than x. X is our third side, which is less than 23. So we're going to call this our, this is our third side right here. It's the X in this compound inequality. So now, if we go back to the question, is it possible to form a triangle with the given sides? If we've got an 8, a 15, and a 17, and the third side needs to be greater than 7 and less than 23, can we form a triangle with these three sides? Is this number greater than 7 and less than 23? Yes. Those three sides would form a triangle. <coughs> Second question they ask you there. Example B, they give you the side lengths of 6, 8, and 14. All right, so we take the two smaller sides. The two shortest sides are 6 and 8. We take the larger number minus the smaller number. So 8 minus 6 is equal to 2. And then 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. So the range of values for our third side is the compound inequality. 2 is less than x, x being the third side, which is less than 14. That means our third side has to be greater than 2 and less than 14. Is this third side greater than 2 and less than 14? It's not. It's equal to 14. So in this case, this would not form a triangle. So no is your answer. Let's look at example 2. On the next page,
and you're asked if the measures of two sides of a triangle are three and seven. Which is the least possible whole number, or what is the least possible whole number length of the third side. So we do what we just did. We take the three and the seven. And now we're gonna determine a range of values for this third side. So we take seven minus three and we get a four. We take the 7 plus the 3, we get 10. The third side of this triangle needs to be between 4 and 10. So here's our compound inequality. 4 has got to be less than x, and x, the third side, needs to be less than 10. Question is, what is the least possible whole number length of the third side? What's the smallest that this third side can be? Five. Very good. It's got to be a whole number. The next whole number bigger than four is five, so this third side's five. And the way that you'll see the question asked in your practice today, if you want to look over on page 367, uh, problems 12 through 17. You're asked to find the range for the measure of the third side of a triangle given the measures of two sides. So find the range. of the third side given two sides. So again, if you're given a seven and an 11, Here's how we find the range. We take 11 minus 7, and that gives us a 4. We take 11 plus 7, which gives us 18. So our range of values is going to be a compound inequality. So our range is going to be greater than 4. So 4 is less than x, and x is less than 18. This is how you write the range of values for the third side of a triangle. You write it as a compound inequality. And again, the x in the middle is the length of the third side. Both of your inequalities are pointing left, All right, which means that the third side needs to be greater than 4, and less than 18, non-inclusive, right? It's not greater than or equal to. It's got to be greater than 4. So anything larger than 4 or less than 18 would allow those three values to form a triangle. Any questions? 
All righty then, your practice for today is going to start on page 366. Uh, do number four, and then over on the next page, do problems six through 17.